All right, the next video here is we're going to jump right in and create a UID nameplate. So UID, by definition, is a data matrix code. Nothing more. And that's the base ground rule for a UID nameplate or label. It has to be a data matrix code, a two-dimensional barcode. Text is highly recommended, but if you uh, have no space for that, the bare minimum requirement is a barcode. Uh, we're going to use barcode and text in this example. And a quick overview on the bartender designer interface. Again, remember, start button, bartender, and there's a whole bevy of things in the suite, but we're really talking about bartender designer now, right? So up here, this is your main palette for things that you can create. Barcodes, text, lines, boxes, pictures, even RFID chip uh, encoding can be done with this. All right, so let's start with the main requirement, which is a data matrix code. Click up here, click anywhere here. Now you'll get the data that's in the code will be automatically put at the bottom. We don't really want that in our case. We want to do that separately in a, in a three or two line kind of text. So we're going to turn that off. The key thing to remember about bartender, it doesn't matter what it is, an image, a line, a barcode, a text. If you want to edit that item, click twice. Boom, boom, right? So I have a data matrix code and I can put data just you know, lots and lots and lots of data in here. And as you start typing, things grow in size. So that's not really how we want to throw all of this stuff in here into a um, UID barcode. We want to put them in in pieces. Remember, a UID barcode is going to be essentially a, a vendor ID code. Most commonly, it's a cage code with some kind of serialized element, right? And in some cases, it's cage code plus part number plus serial number. If you're serializing within a part number, you have three data elements that are required in the UID. And if you're serializing uniquely within your cage code, you only have two data segments, okay? So um, what I will typically do to, to separate cage code, part number, serial number, and all the other formatting is I will go in here to data sources and I'll just create another one. You can keep creating these. Each time you create a new embedded one, you can do it that way. Or you can just select it and then control C and control V to paste, 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 paste. I call these substrings. And these substrings are individual data entities. They can be um, sourced from an external file or database or a manual data entry prompt, or they can just be static and never change, right? So um, what I will generally do is I will begin with, in this case, let's say a prefix. Um, and we have lots of different style of UIDs that we can use. The most, uh, there isn't a most common one. Um, in aerospace, they tr they tend to use TEI, so I'm going to maybe start with that, just to MFR, and the rules are it's got to have a space after each TEI, text element identifier. And then maybe we'll put in the cage code, one, two, three, four, five. Remember, it's five characters, right? And then we can put in a part number, and in this case, it's going to be PNO space. These have to be capitalized as well. And then maybe I can put in a part number value, just do something like that, maybe a dash one. And then we finish with our um, serialized portion. And if it's a what we call construct two, where it's serialized within the part number, the prefix for aerospace is SEQ. And then we can put in the serial number here, and I'll do the same thing, just put some stuff dash one. Okay. All right. And there we go. Now, is that a UID? Well, no. It contains the data of a UID, but it uh, doesn't conform to the rules of the MIL standard, uh, MIL standard 130. So to make that happen, we do a few things. One, uh, we have to add the prefix 
the ISO prefixes before this that, that are required by the mill standards spec. So I can take things like this here. I'll just copy this guy. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to move this up. Maybe I'll create two of them like that. Copy, paste, right? So in here, I can do the what we call the ISO wrapper. The ISO wrapper is a left square bracket, a right parenthesis, the greater than sign, right? And then the next character is an ASCII record separator. And Bartender has a very nice, convenient little fly out here. So click that, go to control characters, and you'll see RS is down here. Now, as soon as you use something, Bartender is going to put it down here. You can select it here as well. So I'll say insert. And I get the beginning of that ISO prefix. Now, the next thing that I'll find in um, as a requirement, mill standard 130 is the what they call the um, um, the data type. And if we're going to be using TEIs, the data type is called the 12, the data format. And then the following character is a group separator, right? And I'll put that there. So this combination of these three things over here is the ISO prefix. It's commonly what we call the ISO prefix. And at the end, we also have something called the ISO suffix. And that is record separator and end of transmission. Okay. Those are requirements. Now, the other thing that comes into play here is we have to have a delimiter in between these different segments. So I'll take another one of these um, empties, um, and I'm going to put it right after that and right after that. So that delimiter uh, to be ISO consistent has to be a group separator. So I'll put that in there. I'll do the same thing down here, group separator. All right. And that's it. Here's our ISO prefix. There's our first prefix for the cage code, prefix for the part number, prefix and the serial number, and then finishing with the uh, ISO suffix. If you have a bunch of empty fields in here, they have no impact upon the data at all. So watch the barcode. I'm going to go ahead and delete it, and you'll notice the barcode didn't change. There's nothing, no impact there at all. So if there's some design convenience for leaving in some extra numbers there for, you know, you, so you don't have to recreate them if you want to add something else, you can add data like data manufacturer to these UID barcodes as well but they have to appear after these three segments. All right, so this is a UID barcode, and this is a legal UID barcode. It has the ISO structure, has the prefixes that are properly defined, and they have the proper um, characters and spacing and length. All right, so now let's say we wanted to go and do three lines of text. You can go up here to text and just say normal, I'm going to have a piece of text here. Um, and let's say we, if you look up here at this bar, this says it's a one line piece of text. We want to make it a paragraph because we want to be able to have um, cage, serial number, part number, all on the same label. So um, let's, again, you, if you want to change anything, you double click on it. If you click once, you will get um, these boundaries around it. And for many things, you can set them up so that you can just make them larger or smaller by dragging. Okay. So maybe we want to put our, um, let's see, how would we do this? We could do something like this, put our barcode over here, and then we'll put our text over here and we'll let it come down. If you double click on something, you'll be able to open it up and make changes. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to select Control C and then paste it a bunch of times. So now I can make this whole paragraph one entity that's always aligned and all of that. Now, I could use the same approach and just manually start typing in the prefix, the cage code, and then an enter key and all of that. But I don't really want to do that because if I make a change to the value of the part number, I want it to change here, and I want it to change here as well. 
And so um, you can actually, within Bartender, create variable names for one of these little data segments and then use it in other places. And so when you change it, it'll change everywhere. So here's an example. I will uh, take the cage code here and I'll just call it uh, EID, which is my favorite way of saying enterprise ID because it could be a Dodac, it could be a Dunn's number, it could be all kinds of things, right? And then I'll give this, I'll call this um, the original part number, PNO. And I'll call this the serial number, which is SN, right? And if I wanted to, I could do the same thing here and say, look, um, let's call this um, the prefix uh, one. Okay, so I sometimes just call TEI one for text element identifier one. And I'll do the same thing there. TEI two and TEI three. Okay, so now I've given names to six pieces of information here, and I'm going to use them when I create this. So I'll come over here, and instead of typing it in, I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to select TEI1. And then I'm going to select EID. Right? And now I have to put an enter uh, because I want it to go on a different line. And now I'll pick TEI2. And part number, you know, and an enter, and an SEQ. I'm sorry, this will be the third prefix type. And then the serial number. Right? And again, you can leave um, those other things uh, there. You can see this is very messy right now, so we're going to do something else. We're going to go in and we're going to say um, auto fit. What I like to do is use these top two here. Um, yeah, I generally don't like to go over the, um, the maximum size of my selected font size. But um, here I'll, you can even say center with that. And now I'm going to change this to let's say maybe make my max font size 10 point font. And if I slide this up, pull this down. Sooner or later, I can get to the point where I can make this, whoops, I can make this fit this space very cleanly. See that? Yep. So now I've got the short line that's in line with my barcode. And my part number and serial number can become quite long and extend a little bit further. And now when I change, um, let's say I'm going to change the value of my cage code. And I'll make it uh, five twos. See how it changed in the barcode and here? So whenever you're connecting then, you know, cage code to an external database field or to a, an input prompt, it's going to change it everywhere else. And now we actually have a valid UID label. Our barcode and our text conform to the mill spec, and we have something that we could print and use. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about setting it up so um, the bartender template will prevent users from making mistakes and put in data filters to keep you within the rules of Mill 130.